And this Sunday, Israel's army said it aims to evacuate all Israelis living close to the Gaza Strip within 24 hours as it deployed tens of thousands of soldiers to fight Palestinian militants. For more, let's speak to our correspondent, Iris Mackler in Jerusalem. Hello to you, Iris. Um, what do you have in regards to, to the latest information on the fighting? I can tell you that it's ongoing and that some 30 hours after this incursion by these militants um, from Gaza into the south of Israel, they're still in control of some areas, some villages. So we know that there is quite fierce fighting in a place that uh, was believed to have been cleared, uh, Be'eri, a kibbutz in the south. Uh, and we have heard from the Palestinian militants themselves. I've seen a message from Izadin el Qassam brigades, that's the militant wing of Hamas, saying that by the grace of Allah, as they put it this morning, they managed to send reinforcements to some of their fighters inside southern Israel. In theory, that is possible because the hole in the fence hasn't been repaired yet. However, one of the areas they said they'd sent reinforcements to, Israel says it has actually checked and it's clear. So, uh, Conflicting sources on that, I would say, at this point still. Israel has said that it did intercept uh, a boat from Gaza aiming for Zikim, a coastal village in the south of Israel. Uh, that infiltration, they say, was intercepted. Iris, what more do we know about the numerous reports of hostages? That, I think, is the heart of this story, really, from an Israeli point of view, because there's so much chaos regarding this, the numbers are still not known. Israel has actually set up uh, a point where people can, can give their DNA, uh, give a DNA sample so that they will be able to tell who's dead, who's injured, and then deduce from that how many people there are in Gaza as hostages. We've seen images that Hamas has put out uh, on social media and they said at one point more than 50, now they're saying more than 100. But those, the, the reality of that is not known, and I think it will determine many things, including the Israeli response. For the past 12 hours, like overnight and this morning, people have been telling their stories to Israeli media, and they are heartbreaking. There's an Israeli journalist whom I know who I didn't realise lived in that part of the world. He spent hours trapped uh, in the dark with his children, lying there quietly for all that time, trapped there because they could hear fighting above them. And then they heard a knock on the door, and it wasn't the Israeli military exactly. It was his father who had come with another soldier that he'd roped in. And the journalist was able to say to his children, it's all right, your grandfather's here. But I think that's just a sign of how there wasn't a sufficient Israeli military response. Uh, and those are the stories that are being told, including people who say that they had heard, were on the phone with their children and heard them being taken hostage live and haven't heard from them since. I think that is part of the reason for the response that we've seen from Israel today inside Gaza. Israel says that there are 400 militants from this infiltration, that it is taken prisoner or killed uh, overnight and today, and that what we are seeing is some 500 airstrikes, including targeting the homes of Israeli of Hamas commanders and Hamas military leaders. All right, uh, Iris, thank you very much. Iris Meckler reporting from Jerusalem.